Live from Anaheim, California, it's theCUBE, covering Nutanix.next 2019. Brought to you by Nutanix. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of Nutanix Next here in Anaheim, California. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, John Furrier, and we are kicking off a two-day show here in Anaheim. Uh, it's, I'm so happy to be working with you, John. Awesome to see you. Great event, it's Nutanix, hot, innovative company, under a lot of pressure from VMware, but this marketplace is changing, great transition opportunity for these guys, so it's going to be fun. Exactly, and I, I really want to get into to what we heard on the main stage. We had uh, Dheeraj Pandey up there talking about Nutanix. He, it's a very poignant moment for him because it, it, Nutanix is turning 10 this year. That is a milestone in and of itself. This company has really changed so much. Uh, it's always been about simplifying data management, but it's no longer a one product company. I wonder if you could just reflect a little bit on the changes you've seen. It's been a fun ride. I've, I've known uh, Diraj for 10 years when we first interviewed him, um, when they were misunderstood. They were, no one really got what this HCI was going on. Stu Miniman was early to see it at Gibbon. But it was for a few years, I was like, oh, he's crazy, entrepreneur, but he ended up having the right formula. Very innovative company, they've had great product leadership, great engineering, but 10 years old, they went public. So they're out in the open. Um, Dell Technologies went private, reset everything, then went public, kind of forced to go public, and I was doing great. So you have an interesting dynamic. The company's 10 years old, they went public, and they got to make all these moves out in the open. So the interesting thing at 10 years old for them is that they got a great business, and the market's in transition. Hyperconvergence, HCI as it's called, is a solid foundation, but it's changing very radically with cloud technologies and multi-cloud, and the enterprises morphing into right into their wheelhouse, where there's simplicity needed, there's um, integration needed, all these new opportunities are emerging, and they're still small, so they can be nimble. This is the challenge that they have. They have to get out in front of this next wave. If they don't, there's going to be competitive pressure. And I think that's the big story that I'm seeing here is, they're 10 years old, they're not resting on their laurels, the CEO's aggressive, uh, he's taken on VMware a little bit, and so he's competitive. So we'll see what happens. Oh, well, and, and you said Diraj is, is a friend of theCUBE. Uh, so I, let's talk about his leadership style. So here he, here, here's this company that was a tech startup. It now has a market cap in the multiple billions of dollars, recently gone public. How would you describe his leadership style and also how it's changed since it was a, sort of a little tech startup? Well, Diraj has always been an um, innovator. He's been a visionary. Again, he's, he's a typical uh, founder. He's got the 20 mile stare, as I call it. He can see around the corner. Um, but that's not going to get him um, in this, through this competitive battle. He's got to balance uh, the visionary co uh, competitiveness and, and strategy with tactical execution. They need to execute right now because they are under a lot of pressure, competitive pressure. They need to increase their sales inside the enterprise, take, get new logos and new customers. So I think what I'm seeing from his leadership style is it's a call to arms within the company saying, we got to go take territory down, we got to compete, not necessarily on a, uh, on a head on with say VMware and others, but they got to, they got to continue to be innovate and be competitive. That's very tactical. And that's something that came out of the analyst meeting yesterday that I noticed was he's very tactical, usually he's painting the picture, um, but he's got a great vision and I think that's going to be the challenge. I want to talk about partners. Um, who are sort of the, the key partners that you think will help this company grow? Because it, it does take a village. Well, the interesting strategy that Nutanix is looking at, in my opinion, this is again my opinion, but they have a partnering strategy. Dell Technologies and VMware is all part of a portfolio of end-to-end -end strategy. So really the big competitor uh, against, uh, for Nutanix is going to be Dell. Uh, Dell Technologies and their family of, of companies. Nutanix is going after more of a partnering strategy. They announced a key partnership with Hewlett Packard Enterprise, HPE, who's also competitor in the HCI space. So they got to create this ecosystem strategy and it's going to be about partners. And if Nutanix can integrate with other players, they can be a supplier of IT technology for the broader market. Um, this is something that's interesting. Everyone's trying to be a broker or they use the term, you know, gateway to the multi-cloud or cloud broker. I mean, all these terms have been kicked around, but Nutanix truly has an opportunity to take their product leadership and be a partner and, and tie things together um, more elegantly than say one company end to end. 
Uh, let's talk also about Nutanix, the business. As you as you have said multiple times, this is a this is a hugely competitive industry. This company is under a lot of pressure. Uh, technically, they've got to be tough, but yet they've also they're still they're still small. They can be nimble and yeah. innovative. What 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 is sort of on Diraj's to do list from you speaking as an analyst? Well, I think the number one thing I think he's got to really kind of shore up the sales and marketing effort of it because they have um, when they compete in the marketplace, they need more competitive wins. The stock has taken a little bit hit lately on just some basic fundamentals. Again, I still think they're misunderstood in the market and that's a, there's a big upside for Nutanix. But they got to win more competitive deals. Where they compete with a proof of concept, also known as a POC, they win most of the time. They got to take their product leadership and they got to win in the field. This is a critical thing and lower their cost of acquisition for customers. That's a key kind of financial analysis. The other thing that they got to do is continue to get the product leadership and get positioned for that next wave. That's going to be enterprise and multi-cloud and that's not yet clear, and the numbers don't look that strong, in my opinion, on the growth. It's, no one's really got visibility into what those numbers are going to look like. In their core business, their HCI business, they're solid. So they got to build on that, extend out that base, and that's really the core strategy. How would you describe the customer mindset? Because as you said, this is a company that's misunderstood. They get it, and they're sort of waiting for the customers to catch up, or waiting for the market really to catch up. The customer angle is interesting because you know, a lot of people that like Nutanix are coming from VMware where they pay licenses and VMware had some misfires in the couple years ago on product. They kind of caught, caught back up and shored that up, but that opened up a door for Nutanix. Um, you know, uh, VMware 6.0 has been talked about as a, one of those gaps where opened up the door to Nutanix. So VMware customers are, are kind of looking at Nutanix. I think the HPE relationship's interesting because I think that's going to be a whole new set of customer base. But the customer mindset right now is interesting. They want to not consolidate, they want to actually reduce the pain points around dealing with all this legacy hardware, legacy software, and I think Nutanix's position to come in and say, we can provide an integrated solution, reduce your footprint, give you more capabilities, and free up the time it takes to manage IT. And I think that's one of the consistent thing, themes. The other notable thing I noticed about their customer base is, it's a lot younger and smarter technical people where they don't have that dogma of, this is the way we used to do it, and I think that's going to be an interesting DevOps opportunity where the younger generation in IT would be like, why are we doing this versus this? So I think that's going to be very interesting to see if that network effect for Nutanix will work. Well, I'm interested to hear you talk about this younger generation in relation to the customers, because Nutanix is also a younger generation. You know, it's 10 years old, it's sort of on the verge of adolescence, um, and, and we were just at a Dell EMC World. Uh, that company's turning 35 next week. Obviously, Microsoft and Apple are well into their 40s. Uh, how, how would you, Talk about this company in terms of the of it, of it as part of the new generation of tech companies, tech powerhouses, really. Well, I mean, I think it's it's a contrast between two styles. Michael Dell is awesome, and what he's putting out there is an end-to-end -end strategy for Dell. They want to automate, they want to own the infrastructure layer, and they want to be the preferred supplier for IT. Nutanix is a little bit different. They're younger, they're faster, they're nimble, uh, and they're taking a more integrated approach and a partnership-centric approach. So I think the style is one of a cheetah, who's running fast, that's Nutanix, and then the big elephant, which is Dell, and they're just pounding through the, through the territory. The, the Dell technologies in VMware have more muscle. So they're going to they're gonna have, uh, uh, some good wins there. Nutanix has got to stay fast and nimble and kind of just you know, bob and weave off of what Dell's doing. So I think that's the opportunity for them is to go to the next level and I think DRAJ sees that. The, the question that I see is that the, because they're a public company, they got to balance this all out in the open. And they're very transparent companies so I don't think it's going to be too hard of a challenge but this is what they have to do. They got to really take that revenue up in the cloud and enterprise beyond HCI. And Wall Street is watching. Yeah, and Wall Street's watching. So we have a great show. We have, we're going to be talking uh, products, we're going to be talking uh, women in tech, social impact, research. Uh, for our viewers at home, what do you think that they should be looking for in terms of, in terms of Nutanix and in its journey? I think that what I would look for and what I'm going to be poking at on the interviews is what's next? Because I think this is a critical bet for DRAJ and the team was are they on the right wave? Is this what the customers want? What kind of product leadership they have? And then what's the culture fit for what the customers want? And the customers are looking for simplicity, they, don't want, they want to reduce their cost of ownership, and they want a supply that's going to be around. So I think the key thing is you know, look for 
where it goes next. That's where I think the, the number one thing to look for. Well, John, I'm looking forward yeah. to two days of coverage yeah, with you. Cool. I'm Rebecca Knight for John Furrier. We will have much more of theCUBE's live coverage of Nutanix Next here in Anaheim, California. Stay with us.